I think there are four options for you about how you're going to direct your thoughts and how you're going to lean. The first option is you can choose to rely on, depend on, brace yourself on, lean on something other than God for your security. Maybe your investments, maybe your career, maybe whatever it is. You can get your sense of security from something other than God. That won't work. That won't bring you shalom. Let me show you to you in Isaiah. In Isaiah 31.1, the issue here was for the people in Isaiah's day that Assyria, the superpower nation, was expanding in their direction. And they were tempted to, re and God said, rely on me. And they were tempted instead to rely on Egypt. Egypt to the south might help them face the foe to the north. Should they allow this pagan nation? God said, don't go back to Egypt. You came out of there. Isaiah 31, he speaks to them. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely, there's our word, on horses, who trust, there's our word, same as in Isaiah 26, 3, who trust in the multitude of their chariots and in the great strength of their horsemen, but do not look to who? The Holy One of Israel, Isaiah's favorite title for God, remember from last week, to the Holy One of Israel, or seek help from the Lord. You get it? He's saying if you lean on something else, you lean on Egypt, it won't hold you up. It's not secure. Woe to those who find their security, their shalom somewhere else. Won't bring peace. The second thing you can do is determine I'm going to lean on nothing. I'm my own man. I make my life, make my luck. I'm not dependent on anybody. I don't need God in my life. I'm going to stand on my own two feet. I don't need any help. And you can say, I'm not leaning anywhere. I'm going to lean on nothing. I'll rely on my own resources. And Isaiah says about that that it will not bring shalom. He says in a chapter earlier in Isaiah 30, verses 12 through 13, this is what the who? The Holy One of Israel says, because you've rejected this message, I'm not going to lean up and trust on the Lord. Relied, there's our word, on oppression, depended on deceit, the sin will become for you like a high wall cracked and bulging that collapses suddenly in an instant. It won't bring you peace. You can't make it on your own. You'll, you'll, you'll fall like a wall that collapses. You try to rely on your own smarts and your own ingenuity. And the third option of where you can direct your thoughts and lean is to sort of hedge your bets and uh, try to lean on both God and something else. And that's what many people do. Yeah, I, I'm trusting in God, but I can't trust him with this. I trust, and you're just back and forth, and you try to make a start of the life of relying on God and following him, and then you jump back to something else, and you're just back and forth. You're vacillating. You're trying to play both sides. You're trying to lean on God some and on your own ingenuity or on something else, and we go to the book of James for that. It will not bring peace. And James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him, but when he asks, he must believe, trust, and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he'll receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded. Here's our idea of the mind again. And he's a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. You try to send your mind in different directions and you're double-minded and you will not have stability. You will not have shalom. And the fourth way you can direct your mind is to relean heavily, lie heavenly, fully, completely on God. And that's what Isaiah 26, 3 says. Let's, let me read it to you again. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Let me show you an example of this verse in the book of Isaiah and how it could work out in a real situation. It's in Isaiah 36 and 37. Isaiah 36, 1 tells the event. It says, in the 14th year of King Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. So here comes the enemy. Here comes Assyria from the north. And they uh, capture and every city of Judah except Jerusalem. And here the people are shut up in the capital city of Jerusalem. Now that's stress-filled, don't you think? That'd be a stress-filled situation. That could cause you some anxiety, right? 
The king of Assyria sent his commander in this chapter out to meet the officials of King Hezekiah just outside the city wall of Jerusalem. And this is what he said to them in verse 5. You say you have strategy and military strength, but you speak only empty words. On whom are you depending? That's the same word as trust in Isaiah 26.3. On whom are you trusting, leaning, relying, depending that you rebel against me? Verse 6, look now, you're depending on Egypt, that splintered reed of a staff which pierces a man's hand and wounds him if he leans on it. The word leans is the same word as steadfast in Isaiah 26, 3. Here's our word again, to lean, rely, rest, lie. And he's right. He says, hey, you think Egypt's going to help you? That's like a staff you try to lean on and it falls and it'll splinter your hand. Go through it. He's right. And this passage that followed the officials from Hezekiah that were there said don't speak in Hebrew, speak in Aramaic we understand Aramaic, we don't want the people on the wall to hear what you're saying and that just incited him more and this enemy of God said uh, they're the ones who are going to eat their own filth and drink their own urine, they need to hear it, I'll talk to them in Hebrew and this is what he said to them in Isaiah 36 15 do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord, there's our word again, when he says the Lord will surely deliver us, this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Syria. Don't believe Hezekiah when he says that. And he went on to ridicule and mock them about how he was going to destroy that city completely. The message was brought to King Hezekiah. And his thoughts must have wanted to stampede in a hundred different directions. Can you imagine what his mind would have been like as he tried to deal with this overwhelming army that had come against him and the ridicule against leaning on God that they had said. And Hezekiah spread it out before the Lord, took the letter they had written and laid it before God and he prayed to God and said, Oh God, and he marshaled his thoughts and corralled his thoughts and headed them toward trust in God. He turned the direction of his mind to leaning upon him. And God said through the prophet Isaiah in this chapter, Hezekiah, because you've prayed to me, because you've trusted in me, I'll protect this city. And here's the outcome. In Isaiah 37, let me read to you verses 33 and following. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city or shoot an arrow here. He'll not come before it with shield or build a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, he will return. He will not enter this city, declares the Lord. I will defend this city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David my servant. And then the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. And when the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew and he returned to Nineveh and stayed there. Oh, there'll be many things that threaten your sense of shalom in life. It's a battle for your mind. Your sense of peace will be won or lost in your thoughts. And if you want shalom, shalom, God says, lean heavily on me. Let your weight down on me. I'm solid. I'm a rock. Trust me. Whenever your thoughts go toward anxiety or war worry, you turn them. You may have to do it repeatedly. You may have to repeatedly turn that herd, but you keep turning it and you'll get that herd going in the direction of trusting God with your problems and leaning heavily on Him, you let your weight down on Him, and you keep doing that, and the result in your life, the Bible says, He will keep in perfect peace Him whose mind is steadfast, who's leaning heavily upon the Lord, trust in the Lord, because the Lord is your rock. He's solid. You can depend on Him.